All right, let me draw something for you. I don't like yellow. I want uh, oh, yellow is good, but I'm going to do my axes in white. And uh, okay, we see we got sigma and epsilon, so that's stress and strain. And let's say I drew this curve here. Straight line, linear elastic, and then it fractured. You would look at that, no doubt, and say, ha-ha, that is a ceramic. Classic. No plastic deformation. It's entirely governed by, or it's um, fit by Hooke's law. And, you know, you'd be correct. That's classic behavior for a ceramic. The trouble is, you know, we just go on I, or I, I plot sigma and epsilon, but how did we actually do this? How did we perform the test? How do we get this data, stress and strain? You know, if this was a metal, if this was a metal and it had a curve like this, you know, it's it's fine. You know, what we you would the classic way you do a, a test, a mechanical test here, if you can, is you you do a tensile specimen. So if that's a metal or even a polymer. Trouble is, with a ceramic, there was a few problems. First of all, the ceramic is difficult to machine. Difficult to machine. That means it's difficult to shape into um, that complicated uh, tensile specimen shape, this dog bone specimen. You know, this one here. You see all of the guy? Um, so it's difficult to, to do that. You know, you got to replace your bits regularly and stuff. So a much easier shape to, to machine is this. This shape, rectangular cross-section, is quite easy. I mean, in fact, you can you can do other uh, shapes, like you could do a cylinder. Um, we're going to actually focus on this uh, rectangular cross-section um, initially, or, or for in, in this topic. Um, but you pick a simple shape. Another thing is um, it's actually difficult to grip. You know, you've got to put a substantial force onto this sample, and you do that with a ceramic, and you tend to crush the ceramic. It cracks and crumbles. And the final thing is a little more subtle uh, to kind of appreciate, but it's actually really important to align the sample in a tensile test with the loading axis so that it's being loaded only in tension. You can imagine if you had uh, your sample, uh, say, and I'm going to exaggerate here, but if you put your sample into the machine on a bit of an angle, okay, again, I'm exaggerating substantially to show the effect here, but say this is what it was, and then you started to pull on it like this, well, you can appreciate that initially there's going to be a substantial shear component um, in this, but if it's a metal or a polymer, it, it'll it'll plastically deform, and with time and deformation, and in fact, often for quite low loads, the sample will self-align with the loading axis, and that's that's good. No, that, Writing was not good, was it? Self-align, it's supposed to be a word. It didn't even look, it wasn't even legible. Okay, self-align. I get so excited and I just write quickly. So it, it would self-align. This is for, you know, something ductile. Um, I was going to write metal. Let's just write ductile. Okay, something ductile. But of course, ceramic is not ductile. So if you, if you have your sample even off by a, a tiny, tiny angle, you don't have a valid tensile test and you get significant shear component. So a much easier way to do it is take this easy shape like this and support it in a couple of spots. Okay, support it in a couple of spots and just load it in the middle. And what that is, is it's, that's, that's called bending. And if it's a if it's in bending, and I'll draw the beam itself in three dimensions here for you. If it's in bending, then the sample is called a beam. The sample is a beam. Okay, and so that's quite an easy way to do uh, a test on a on a ceramic. I've shown a sim a single load in the middle there, 
you can also do four point bend that's slightly more more uh, a slightly better test but three point is the one we're going to cover here it's, it's quite simple um, so we've got the, the sample dimensions here to consider now you've got the width here which is commonly given this letter B and then the height is um, usually its height is kind of like the depth so give it the letter D and then this distance here between the supports is called L and of course the load is F and so then the last question is, okay, well, so that's great. How do we get from this and force to a stress strain curve? And so the answer to that is, well, we have to consider what's happening here. The, 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 the ceramic, as we know, is, is poor in tension. And so the lower surface of the beam is actually in tension. The lower surface is in tension. So what we want to do is we're going to calculate the stress on the lower surface of the beam. Now, do you want the stress here? Or do you want the stress here? Well, you want the stress where the load is the highest. And it turns out that the load is highest directly underneath where the load is applied. Uh, the, the, the stress is highest underneath where the load is applied. So we just need an equation to calculate the stress on the lower surface of the beam in um, mid-span. OK, so that equation for the stress on the lower surface, and you could derive this from the beam equation. Uh, I'll just give it to you. Though stress on lower surface under the central load point is sigma is three halves FL over B D squared. Okay. So that's the equation. I just want you to appreciate that you do not use, you know, force divided by this cross-sectional area or something like that. That would be uh, nonsensical. So this is the stress that we're after. Um, the last thing I'll just mention is to you can you can similarly calculate the strain, but the best way to tend to actually determine the strain is to put a little because you know this is where you're calculating the stress. So you put a little strain gauge on. You put a strain gauge on there. These can be fairly expensive little pieces of mach of, uh, um, of uh, electronics with a little wire, and uh, the resistance changes very, uh, very um, accurately with changes in length, and then you can measure that and quantify it as a strain. So that's how you normally do that. But what I wanted to introduce was the equation for the stress in three-point bending, and I'll just put that subscript in there, three-point. Okay. And oh, I guess I should define these terms just to be complete. And that's the load, okay? That's the load in newtons. No, correction, that's the load in newtons. Okay, that's the, um, the so for the, this is the span. Okay, and that would be in meters. And that's the width. That would be in meters as well, length units. And that's the height, and the depth. And that's again in meters, so it works out so that you get your ultimate uh, value in units of Pascal or Newton per square meter, which is good. All right.